We're here with J.P. Brown, who is the conservator of Pacific Anthropology in the Regenstein Lab here at the Field Museum. But today we're not talking about Pacific Anthropology. No, today we're talking about Egypt. And kind of ancient Egypt. Well, pretty ancient Egypt. What we're looking at here is the mummy of Pen Ptah, a male from the 25th dynasty, about 2,700 years ago, something like that. That seems pretty ancient to me. It is fairly ancient. What are we doing with an Egyptian artifact today? What we're trying to do is understand more about how Egyptian culture works. The really interesting thing about studying burials is that you don't bury yourself. Right. right? It's, oh, it's yeah. exactly what society thinks is what happens, because you get no say at all in the end. It's just really fascinating to see how this incredibly long and you know, intense tradition of mummification actually changes over the years. Everybody knows the thing about, you know, canopic jars and take the mm -hmm. organs out and put them in. But starting at about this period, the canopic jar starts to fade out. It's not really so much of a thing anymore. Instead, the organs are wrapped up and put back inside the mummy. Oh, so does this individual have the, the organ jars with it or did it, or are the organs wrapped up and inside the body? As far as we we suspect that they're wrapped up and inside the body, but we haven't done X-radiography on this specimen yet, so we don't know. What we'd expect to find is, is a number of packets inside the body. Kind of just like a chicken when you get it at the grocery store and it's got the gizzard bits in it, sort Well, of. yes, except that you're not planning to take them out and make, make a gravy of them. <laughs> what we know about mummification is that it's a fairly elite activity, mm -hmm. so it's the top 5% or something like that. And to preserve the body, they um, took the brain out, they opened up typically with an incision at the lower left-hand side of the abdomen and then removed most of the internal organs. Part of the removal of the brain involved punching through the nose. There's this story that they took the brains out with hooks, but mm -hmm. you've handled brains. You know, yeah, brains like, are not It's not like intestines. Silly, right, it's not like silly putty where right? right. you could squeeze it out through a hole. It seems to me likely that they used something like turpentine to try and digest it a bit. Um, and then it just and, goops out. And then pour it out, like essentially. A disgusting mucus. Having done all that, the body having been packed in Natron for something like 40 days, then the mummy would be assembled, wrapped. So it would be in a tomb for some period of time and then... It would just stay there forever. Forever? Until... Is, is the plan. Was the plan, until who came along and upset this? So you've got tomb robbers, you've got people reusing tombs. Maybe a tomb's fallen into disuse and people are like, oh, free tomb, awesome. Then you've got archaeologists coming in and uh, excavating. Yeah, kind of coming in and wanting to make observations. And so that's how it ended up at the Field Museum. We acquired it from the Supreme Council of Antiquities in Egypt. Okay. Um, and what we don't have, alas, is the story before that. What was the purpose of taking this sarcophagus and tomb and coffin out of storage and into the lab today? So we're preparing this mummy for a touring exhibit that we've got called Mummies, Images of the Afterlife. What we're going to be talking about here is the ways that people messed mummies about before we had modern imaging technologies like X-ray and CT. Oh, so what not to do with right. mummies. Before the 1920s, this was pretty much the only way of getting in there and finding anything out. And you mean the only way being actually doing invasive kind of investigative work? Right, so you can see that the outer wrappings have been totally removed to reveal the inner wrappings, and then my guess is they kind of burrowed around in there to try and see what they could see. Also, you can see that basically the head's fallen off. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of noticed it was missing. It had lost its head. The problem with unwrapping is that the final layer of bandage is usually uh, adhered on with resin. And when you try and unwrap that, usually what happens is it gives it the neck and the, the head comes off. So when do you think the, that those first invasive attempts to figure out what was going on, when, when did that happen? So I think what was happening when they were collecting the mummies in the late 19th century was they were really looking for museum-ready exhibits. Have you come across any surprises in opening it up today? There's this painting on the bottom of the outer coffin. Guns of the Sky, Newt. And that was pretty traditional, right? That they would paint this figure off yeah, because but, she's supposed to sweep you off into the, into the next world. Right, and she's quite often embracing people from behind. Well, that so, doesn't sound so bad. Yeah, it'd give you a bit of a hug when yeah. you're dead. Well, you know. And then we did find some beetles inside the coffin, so we're going to have to... Beetles? Yeah, we're going to have to identify those. Are these museum beetles or are these Egyptian beetles? We don't know yet. Oh. Yeah. So we're back, unexpectedly, in JP's lab, because there's been a new development in the mummy conservation project. So uh, 
When we were working on the mummy itself, um, what we found was that unlike the majority of late Egyptian human mummies, the brain hasn't been removed. There's no brain scooped. Right, the brain was unscooped. This is what we found. So Ew. This is dried Can Egyptian I hold brains. This? Yeah, sure. Oh gosh. I'm holding I'm holding old brains. These are the oldest brains I've ever held. But what we also found mixed in with the brains. Yeah, yeah, I'm nervous holding those a little bit. Was uh, these blowfly casings. So there was something in there eating the brain. Eating the brain. And you think this was at or around the time that the mummy was mummified or before? Before. Then? So uh, we think this guy actually decomposed a bit before they got him into the mummification Isn't that kind system. of counter to, to how we thought the dead were treated? Well, I, th I think it probably depends a bit how far away you are from mummification facilities when you die. But not, not just flies eating your brain, then um, domestids eating the flies. These are flesh-eating beetles. These are the same flesh-eating beetles that Anna uses in her lab upstairs. They're actually a different species, but the same family. Same family. So those are like 2,500-year-old domestic beetles. Yeah, something like that. Maybe even a little older. One's trying to think about what circumstances this could happen in. I mean, maybe you died when you were off and on your own somewhere and oh. people didn't find you for a bit. It's, you know, kind of interesting. We'd like to know what the story is, but I guess we never will. Well, you never know. Maybe maybe the more work that you're doing on this guy, the more secrets he will reveal Could as time goes on. Yeah, it could be. Or maybe someone will just hand you a, a hieroglyphic a plate. Yeah, and it'll, yeah. it'll reveal the secret. Maybe it's the real King Tut. I don't know. I'm just this all conjecture. Yeah, it's a bit later. Yeah, 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 well. Yeah. Are these all of the brains? or? That's all we got. So yeah. that doesn't look like... Um, all the brain that you would have left if you dried a brain. Yeah. Um, but of course the insects ate some, so. So the dermestid ate some brain and the the blowflies. Well, the, blow, they... the blowflies, my guess, ate the brain. Okay. And then the domestids ate the blowflies. Wow. It's a it's a buggy bug world inside of the cranium of a mummy. Yep. That's really Still exciting. Cool. It still has brains on it.